in terms of mentors and influences, um, when you started going from the athlete to a, to a practitioner mode, who were some strong influences? So there were, there were some coaches uh, in France who were uh, video analyzing the athletes. And so yep. they are not internationally renowned, but they are really, really uh, well known in France for that, you know, frame by frame, very detailed analysis of the running technique. And um, on the biomechanics side, I was really influenced by my uh, PhD supervisor, um, who was a doctor, medical doctor, Professor Di Prompero in Italy, because yeah. he was trying to analyze the locomotion and the uh, energetic cost or the biomechanics with a very, very big picture first approach. Like uh, what does a human body need to produce, to run fast? You know, very mm. rough, basic, uh, Newtonian laws of motion approach. What would be some practical tips that you found on improving a athlete's um, max velocity? So the max, well, I think max velocity is influenced by two, two factors. First is the ability to generate that max velocity. So to go there, it's not, max velocity is not something that happens, you know, uh, alone. It's acceleration to max velocity. And so if you are able to accelerate more and your body is able to produce more uh, speed, you will be faster. That's first. For example, when you pull someone, uh, almost everybody is able to run faster. When you, when you help me produce this, this extra force in acceleration, eventually I will run faster. And then from the, for the coach's point of view, giving feedback to athletes, um, do you like to focus on internal cues, external cues? How many cues do you like to give an athlete? It, I know it's a very general question, but when it comes to, to speed and power training. Yeah, so you have to be very careful with uh, how the athlete reacts to internal or, or external cues. Uh, I, yeah. I can recommend the works of Nick Winkelmann on that. That's really, you know, an amazing uh, um, book and, and coaching reference. And uh, the idea is to, in my opinion, the idea is to use uh, high-speed cameras and, and, and today's iPhones and iPads slow motion because most of the athletes, by definition, when they, they don't run, let's say, correctly, even if that's a, that's a two-day discussion, what is correct, um, yeah. they don't realize exactly the way they run. For example, if you have an athlete with a very forward inclined trunk when they run mm -hmm. and you ask them, do you think your trunk is you know, upright or forward or backward oriented, most of them don't have the ability to correctly uh, describe what they did. In terms of drills to, to help strengthen that hip extension, um, you've got like your A marches and A skips and, and like maybe figure four switches on the wall. Are they some helpful things to do to practice that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blend, um, you know, and... knee dribbling. Uh, very, very intense knee dribbling, uh, extending limbs, uh, uh, skips, and so on. But again, you can take the very same drill and depending on the instructions, have a totally different stimulus. Take the A skip. That's the, you know, it's the A skip because it's one of the most common. You can have an, an A skip drill that is done with a very powerful hip flexion, but a hip extension that is, you know, like, you know, loose. Yeah. Or you can have exactly the opposite. The rhythm is totally opposite. You can have a very loose hip flexion and then a super powerful hip extension. That's the exact same drill. How do you keep yourself at the top of your game? What are some of your favorite ways to upskill your knowledge? Well, I think social media, well-used well, well used social media is, uh, is really interesting. Uh, when you mix um, Twitter and Instagram to see who is doing what and following, you know, uh, uh, good coaches and good professionals. I think it's a good way, yeah. uh, yes. but definitely the, the other way is to read. Uh, I mean, you, you have to read papers and you have to be aware of, if you hit the keywords, uh, sprint, soccer, rugby, hamstring uh, on PubMed and you receive the alerts on that, you get something like a hundred papers a week. So of course, not all of them are interesting, but at least every week there's one or two papers out that you need to, to see and read to, to update knowledge. And the second thing is that I try to keep my hands on the motor. So practicing myself, uh, new exercises, new ideas. I'm, I'm very often at the gym trying some stuff.